Illy Peacock was too little to be on her own. Which is why rescuers weren't surprised when they saw her doing this. They knew it meant she was looking for milk from her mother. Just a few days earlier, the rescuers had found Illy Pika stuck on top of an oyster trestle bed. She was too little to be alone in the wild. They could tell she needed help, so they rushed her to the seal rescue center. Illy Pika was small and needed a lot of milk so that she could grow big enough to return to the wild. But there was a problem. Her mother wasn't there to feed her. That's when the rescuers came up with an idea. They made a pretend seal mother out of a wetsuit. That way, Illy Pika could feel safe while she drank her milk. And it worked! So well that Illy Pika cuddled up for a little nap. Illy Pika was growing, but she still had a long way to go before returning back home. It was time for Illy Pika to start what rescuers call fish school. Step one, pour in the fish. Step two, plop into the tub. Step three, catch a fish with your mouth. She's so funny to watch it. <laughs> Gobbling up all of that fish was making Illy Pika stronger. And as she grew, she started to get braver. Brave enough to defend her tub from the daily cleaning brushes. She was like, go away, tall, spiky monster. You think I don't see you? I see you! Out, foul brush! Out, I say! Are you trying to scoop me out? I will live in here forever, you hear me? Forever! The rescuers knew all that bathtub bravery meant it was time for the next step of her journey. Seal school where she could meet other seals and practice catching fish in open water like she would in the wild. The rescuers wondered, would Illy Pika be ready? She hopped over to the pool, but she seemed nervous to get in. This pool was so much bigger than her bathtub. And there was someone else in it. Illy Pika hadn't met another seal before, but she kind of liked it. She was like, I think I could get used to this. Now, Illy Pika spends her days learning how to be a seal from her new friends. As soon as she gets a little bigger, her rescuers know she'll be ready to go back to the wild. But while Illy Pika keeps working, her friends are about to do something amazing. Many of them are at the end of their journeys at the rescue center, and their lives in the wild are just beginning. As the other seals head back into the sea, Illy Pika couldn't be happier because she knows soon they'll be able to play together again back home in the wild. Oh my God! Don't worry, little snake. We'll get you out of here. This lost python is covered in ticks and dehydrated. You must have been outside by yourself for a long time. And you probably feel scared. Why don't you come home with us? We're gonna get you all cleaned up, buddy. We'll put you in this bag to keep you safe while we take you with us. You can't see it yet, but this is your new home. Aw, your new doggy sibling wants to say hello. You're still all curled up and scared. But I bet this will help you relax. Fresh water. Drink up, little python. Does that feel nice and warm? Now let's make it a little more interesting. All right, buddy. It's a snake bath. Dish soap will help us get all those ticks off of you. OK, time to come out. <sighs> Fine, five more minutes. Anybody have a rope? All right, ticks, we're coming for you. Don't worry, little python. We'll make sure we get them all. Pinch. Pinch. And done. Hmm, 
The ticks are all gone, but your skin still has cuts. What should we do? We've got them in a bag, and we're bringing them to the vet right now. The vet says you need medicine to help your skin heal and protect you from an infection. We need to put it on your skin every day. Maybe that'll help you uncurl and stretch out like a happy snake again. Ready for your medicine? We'll be very gentle and make sure to cover all of the sore spots. Does that feel nice? All right, sweetie, you ready to go to bed? You heard your mom. Time to sleep and let the medicine do its magic. There she goes. Sweet dreams. Good morning, little python. Whoa, the medicine's healing your skin. You're shedding and growing brand new scales. It'll take time until it's all off. That means it's time for... Oh, sweetie. Oh, that feels nice, right? It's been a few days now, and you're looking great, little python. She looks so happy. <laughs> Hi, gorgeous. Hello. Look at your shiny new scales. The cuts are healing. And you're uncurled and flicking your tongue, which means you're happy. Is this your way of saying thank you? You've come so far, friend. When we found you, you were hurt and alone and couldn't stop curling into a ball. But now you're stretched out and flicking your tongue. We love you, little python. We're so glad that you're all better. When a rescuer saw a dog on the street, she thought she was hungry. But the dog was actually trying to tell her something else. So the rescuer followed her and discovered that the dog was a mama to these puppies. Hi. It turned out that she wanted the rescuer to help them. Hi, babies. The whole family was hungry. But the rescuer could tell they needed more than just food. They had fleas and ticks. And some of the puppies weren't feeling well. The rescuer thought if she could bring them all to her animal shelter, she could help them feel better. With all the puppies in the car, they were almost ready to go. There was just one problem. The mama dog was afraid of cars and wouldn't get in. But these puppies needed help right away. So the rescuer decided to take them to her shelter first and then come back for their mom later. At the shelter, she gave the puppies medicine and food. And after a little while, the little puppies started to feel better. Rizzo, sit. Good girl. Now it was time to go back for their mom. At first, the rescuer couldn't find her anywhere. Come on, Danny. Until. She could see that the mama dog was worried. Were her puppies okay? She missed them so much already, but was still too scared to come near the car. Would she ever be brave enough to get in? But then she smelled something. It was the scent of her puppies. And the more she smelled her pup's scent, the braver she became. Hi. You're so sweet, honey. Then, 
when the rescuer wasn't looking? The mama dog jumped into the car. Good girl. Even though she was still a little nervous, she'd be brave for her pups. When they got to the shelter, the pup's mom heard her babies crying in the other room. Do you hear your puppies? She couldn't wait to go in. <laughs> her pups couldn't stop wagging their tails when they saw her. They'd hoped she would find them again. And she did. Just like a brave, loving mama dog would. All thanks to a rescuer who did everything she could to help this dog family live a happy and healthy life together. Hi, little calf. You're a baby zebu. We'll call you Angel. We heard that your back legs don't work, but you want to walk. And there's got to be a way. We just brought you home, so we'll give you a bubble bath and a kiss on your fuzzy head. Oh, hi. Oh, thank you for the kisses. Time to get all dried off and wrap you in a donut blanket. Then give you something to eat. Are you ready to try getting on your feet? All you need is a leg up and off you go. We can't hold up your back legs forever. We need something that will help you do it on your own. Like a doggy wheelchair. Hold on. Can a zebu learn to use a dog wheelchair? It's worth a try. We'll get you all strapped in. So far, so good. Good job. There you go. Now you have a pretty good life in the house. You're friends with all the inside pets. There's Davy and Sawyer and Jet, the cat you love to lick. But your cart doesn't work so well outside. And you're getting too big for it anyways. some better wheels. So we'll take you to the animal hospital to see if they can help. First, the vet makes sure you're healthy. Then measures you to see what size cart you need. I think your new cart needs to be a little higher. Now we'll wait for it to come in the mail. Have some banana while we wait. Here's your new cart. I think it's time for you to try running around outside. Don't be nervous, Angel. You can do this. That a girl? You're making friends. with Pumpkin and Ellie. Pumpkin says, I like you a lot, Angel. Now you can play with the other farm animals outside. There's really nothing you can't do. With just a little help, you learned how to walk and how to use a cart. Sure, we helped a little. But it was all you, Angel. Seeing your cute little face, your gentle kisses, and the way you never give up 
makes everything all better. Willow was living all alone in the woods when a guy named Graham spotted her hiding behind some trees. He thought she needed his help, but she didn't seem happy to see him. Some people would have left Willow alone after that, but Graham had a feeling that something was really wrong. He decided to convince Willow to let him help her. Maybe some water would do it? Need some water? She did look thirsty. There you go. You get some more water. Suddenly, Willow seemed relaxed and was basically in love with her new best friend. All it took was a little kindness. Graham wanted to get Willow out of the woods, but walking seemed hard for her. That's when he realized she wasn't just alone and thirsty. Her legs were hurt. So they took it slow. His plan was, oh, Willow has to go pee. Well, she did drink a lot of water. His plan was to get Willow out of the woods and bring her to a vet. Then he'd figure out how to find her family. But first, lunch. Graham didn't have dog food, so he gave her the next best thing, chicken nuggets. Good girl. Graham took Willow to the vet and found out that Willow's back legs were broken. She didn't need casts or surgery. She just needed time. So Graham brought her home to live with him, at least until she healed. And pretty soon, go Willow! Now that Willow was feeling better, it was time to find her family. But he wasn't sure if Willow even had a family. Maybe she had always lived by herself. He decided to post on social media to find out. But nobody seemed to know where she came from or why she had been in the woods. Graham didn't know what to do. But the more time they spent together, the more he realized that without even meaning to, he had made Willow part of his family. He decided to adopt her and become her dad forever. Willow never wanted to leave his side. And she had one more surprise in store for him. One day, Graham thought that she had started to look a little different. Willow was getting bigger and bigger. Graham was pretty worried. Until puppies! It turns out Willow didn't just have hurt legs in the woods. She was also about to be a mom to puppies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine puppies who loved Willow and Graham so much. It wasn't so long ago that Willow was by herself in the woods. But now, she has a huge family. And Willow knows she'll never be lonely again. This little puppy was lost. He was all alone in the jungle near a beach. He really needed someone to rescue him but nobody knew where he was. Until Brian and Victoria saw something in the bushes and became animal rescuers. They talked quietly to the little dog until he trusted them. Come on, buddy. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. And let them help him out of the woods. They wrapped them in a soft towel to make him feel warm and safe. They gave him some food. And belly rubs! The pup was happy. But where was his family? The rescuers looked, 
but couldn't find them. And they waited, but no one came to get him. So they decided to make him part of their family and named him Taino. There was just one problem. The rescuers were on vacation, far away from home. So they brought him to the vet, who said he had no fleas, and took him home on the airplane with them. Taino was excited to get on a plane. Well, maybe not that excited. When he got to his new home, Taino was so happy and let his new family know it. But one day, Brian and Victoria saw that Taino was limping. So they became animal rescuers again. They took him to the vet, where the doctor said that Taino needed an operation to fix his leg. Taino's new family was very worried. But the operation went great. Taino had a cast on his leg, but he was going to be A-OK. -okay. He just needed some time to rest. And lots and lots and lots of love. Soon, Taino was healthy enough to zoom and ready to hitch a ride in Mom's shirt and grab a drink of water on his walk with Dad and do some chair dancing. Taino didn't have it easy at first and went through some tough times. But thanks to Brian and Victoria, he has a loving new family and is so, so happy. If you see an animal in trouble, don't try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. My mom helped me with the dogs I rescued. The minute Hope was born, everyone could see she was extra special. She had a hole in her shell right over her heart. Some people were afraid for Hope, but she kind of liked being one in a million. She just needed someone to give her extra help. She needed a rescuer. Mike's obsessed with taking care of water animals. He's a dad to this zebrafish, a rainbow belly pipefish, and so many turtles. So as soon as Mike heard about Little Hope, he knew he had to help her. But how do you take care of a turtle with a hole over her heart? Mike remade one of his regular turtle tanks so it was perfect for Hope. He used a special filter for her water, a heater to keep the temperature just right, and put in a log covered in moss so it couldn't hurt her heart. Mike wanted the little turtle to love it. But what would Hope think? When she arrived, he couldn't believe how tiny she was. She was barely bigger than a quarter. Mike was worried. But Hope wasn't worried at all. She might have had a hole over her heart, but she was brave. She swam around. and chased after food, picked a favorite picnic spot, and liked to get her shell polished. Eventually, Mike stopped worrying, because Hope was doing great.
And then the best thing happened. Hope started getting big. Until one day, she was kind of giant. The hole in her shell had grown with her, but it still didn't stop her from being her turtle self. Now, this one in a million turtle is living her best life. A life full of fun. With a rescuer she loves. And a warm and special heart. This poor dog doesn't have a home of her own. Some rescuers spotted her and are trying to help, but she didn't want to leave her field. They weren't sure why until they moved closer and found puppies, hey. all hiding underground. She'd put the pups there to keep them safe. But this was no place for a mom and her pups. The rescuers knew they had to act fast. Since the mama dog was too afraid to come near, I just got, I just got. they decided to get her puppies out first. But how? The hole was pretty deep, and they didn't want to risk hurting the pups by digging them out. So, they decided to do things the old-fashioned way. Oh, I've got his hand on his neck. Don't get his front paws, you see. Come on. Yes, sir. Okay, come on. Yeah. Hey, hello. Come on, little one. You're stuck, almost. Come on. Just like that, Hola. two puppies were out. Look at you. They could hear more, but there was a problem. No, too far down? Yeah. The rest of the puppies were too far down to reach. That meant they'd have to do the one thing they had tried to avoid, using tools to dig them out. One wrong move and they might accidentally hurt one of the pups. But there was no other way. Come on. This one wants out. Come on, baby, out you come. Oh. <laughs> we win! Had they gotten all of them? Nope, there was still one more left. Oi, oi, oi. Hello. Hello. Now that all the puppies were out, it was time to take them to the vet. The rescuers were so happy. But the real work was only just beginning. Now they had to go back for the mom. Luckily, she wasn't hard to find. She's going to look for her babies. But eventually, they caught her. Finally, they were safe. After the mom and puppies had some time to feel better and grow, each one found a loving family to adopt them. <laughs> the rescuers couldn't ask for a happier ending. It's the reason they do whatever it takes to help animals in need. Oh, adorable. No matter how deep of a hole they're in.
This bald eagle has an injured wing, and she is not happy about it. Her vet hadn't helped an animal as fierce as this bald eagle before. So when he met her, he was like, whoa, and then got to work. He took an x-ray of her wing and saw that she needed surgery to fix it if she'd ever fly again. But she looked fierce and unpredictable. He'd have to be very careful and do everything he could to calm her down. The vet gave her medicine until she felt comfortable and started the surgery. Wakey, wakey, dude, you did well. When it was over, everyone was surprised to see that the eagle was calm. It was like she knew the people who fixed her wing were her friends. Until she found out that her wing needed time to heal. She wasn't ready to return to the wild. She did not like the sound of that. She was so fierce. They gave her the nickname Wolf. Wolf knew the rescuers were her friends, but she couldn't stop herself from getting mad. It's just who she was. Taking care of Wolf wasn't easy, but the rescuers didn't mind because one day they'd get to see Wolf soar the sky. And slowly, Wolf started feeling better. Every day she was like, can I go now, please? But her rescuer still needed to make sure she could fly. And when it was time for her first test flight, they wondered if she had enough strength in her wing to get off the ground. They were about to find out. With time and practice, Wolf was gliding through the air just like she used to. She was like, did you see that? I am definitely ready now. Her rescuers agreed. They took her out to a spot near the woods where the vet felt Wolf's wing one last time. And Wolf? Oh, did she get ya? <laughs> Wolf was still fierce. Finally, it was time. She gave a few flaps of her healed wings and... The rescuers got to see her fly free. Wolf wasn't easy on her rescuers. She was fierce from the moment she arrived at the vet. But they never gave up on her. And now, she's happy, healthy, free, and grateful to her heroes. Careful toast, be gentle with that kitty. This was the moment Lucy the kitten met Toast the dog. Soon, these two would become best animal friends. Utterly inseparable. Two peas in a fuzzy pod. Someday, Toast would even save Lucy's life. But right now, they're more like best animal strangers. Toast didn't know it yet, but Lucy was a stray cat. She didn't have a home or a family, which is probably why Lucy followed Toast to her home, walked through the door, and right up to Toast. Hi, I live here now. And if that wasn't confusing enough for Toast, Lucy started following her everywhere. Wait up, please, I am little. Ooh, where are we going? Is there food? Toast wasn't really sure what to think about her new shadow, but Lucy wasn't really bothering her. That is, until Toast saw this. Lucy, the cat, in her food. Most dogs would have been pretty mad to see a cat in their food. And sure, Toast was a little annoyed. 
but Lucy seemed so hungry and in need of someone to take care of her, especially someone who could clean that food off her whiskers. Lucy was like, okay, okay, I'm clean. Ugh. Clearly, this kitten needed more than just food. She needed a friend. She needed toast to give her a boost to high places or a warm place to sleep. Toast and Lucy became really close. So close that Lucy even tried to nurse from Toast. That's right, Lucy tried to get milk from Toast like she was her mom, which is unusual. But the vet said it happens sometimes when two animals love each other as much as Toast and Lucy do. Toast had gone from being completely confused by this kitten to a loving, caring, protective parent. And her protectiveness paid off big time the day she saved Lucy's life. Remember, I mentioned that earlier? This is that time. One morning, Lucy had gotten way too close to the pool. Kittens like Lucy can't swim. Being so close to the water isn't safe. <gasps> Look out, Lucy! But Toast spotted the kitty just in time. She scooped Lucy up and carried her to safety. She's like, Lucy, don't scare me like that. <gasps> After that, Toast kept an even closer eye on her little kitten daughter. Toast Train is leaving the station. Now, it wasn't Lucy following Toast. Toast was following Lucy. It wasn't long ago that Toast and Lucy met for the very first time. And now, they'll never be apart. All because Lucy decided to walk through Toast's door and into her heart. A dog and a cat, a mom and a daughter. Not just best animal friends, a best animal family. And they always will be. This dog hops just like a kangaroo. He even looks like a kangaroo. He got big old ears. That's probably why his name is Joey. Joeys are what they call baby kangaroos, if you didn't know. Joey was found when he was just a small puppy. The person who found Joey took good care of him. But Joey needed special help. That's because Joey has two legs instead of four. Joey really needed someone who could give him lots of attention and love. He needed a really special rescuer. When an animal rescuer named Erica first saw Joey, she knew she was the right person to take care of him. So Joey flew on a plane all the way to America. And Erica brought him to her animal rescue. He was a little bit shy at first. But once she introduced him to the other dogs at the rescue, he felt right at home. He became best friends with everybody. He was a super happy dog. Erica was sure someone would adopt Joey soon, but she was still worried about Joey. He didn't always look comfortable getting around. He does bang his chest pretty hard sometimes when he's chasing the other dogs or when he's walking and he's tired he kind of like uses his face as like a cushion on the floor. So Erica decided to get wheels for Joey so he could move around like the other dogs and wouldn't hit his chest on the ground so much. They took Joey to a special animal doctor and got him a brand new set of wheels. I don't know if he's gonna like them because he's been without them for so long. But when he tried them on for the first time... He really did not like them. He just wanted to keep hopping like he always had. All he's known is not having his two front legs and he seems pretty happy. And as long as Joey felt happy, Erica was happy. Yay! 
Joey and Erica did everything together. Joey goes everywhere with me, goes to the rescue with me, he comes home with me, goes to my parents' house with me. I've taken him to the beach. When they go pet store shopping, Joey's laying in the plush toys. He likes playing with sticks and digging around in every patch of dirt he could find. And snuggling on the couch. He was a really happy dog. Erica loved taking care of Joey. And Joey loved her right back. It wasn't long before Erica decided she wanted to adopt Joey so they could keep doing everything together. It's official. I decided to adopt Joey and make him a part of my family. Hey, Joey. I wasn't really surprised because you could tell from the beginning that those two were meant to be. Now, Joey has a forever home and Erica has a very special pup. Remember, if you see an animal in trouble, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. My mom helps me with the dogs I rescue. Hey Casper, you want to be a bear? Like a big, strong bear? Not so fast, buddy. There are a few bear steps you have to take before you can be huge. Bear steps, like drinking from a bottle, taking your first step, playing with a friend, going outside, swimming, and most importantly, climbing your first tree. That's it, not too bad. I think he could do it. Oh, I think he's hungry. Looks like he's ready for step one. Drinking from a bottle. This calls for a big little bear nap. Okay, we'll check back in on you later. Hey, look who's awake. He thinks he's ready to be a big bear, but he's got a ways to go. You got this. Okay, he's getting up again. You're looking stronger, Casper. Can he? He can! He's taking his first steps. Walking bear coming through. And once you can walk, you can do the next thing big bears do. Play and get completely covered in hay. You're not quite ready for tree climbing yet, buddy. One bear step at a time. Hey, what's in there? Your first play date. And your first time falling down in front of your friend. Eh, he doesn't care. He's ready to play. <laughs> you both sound like bears, but you're still babies. Looks like he's ready for the next bear step. Do you remember what it is, Casper? That's right, going outside. And he's running away. He ran away. Found you. Still practicing climbing trees for that last big bear step. Bear dance! That's not one of the steps to becoming a big bear. But swimming is. Well, that is one way to get in. It's time for the last step. You're almost there. Just have to climb a tree. Okay, this right here is some good climbing practice. Just taking a quick break to play tag. And another dance. Where are you going? Mm, Casper? Hey, there's a bear in that tree. A big bear. 
named Casper. Oops, sorry, make that two big bears. Casper, you did it, buddy. You made it through all the steps. You're not a baby anymore. You're finally a big, strong bear. These rescuers are saving a baby sea lion, but it won't be easy. Do you want me to go down and around? They think she was caught in a bad storm and got lost, and now they have to use a net to get her out from under the rock. But the sea lion doesn't like that plan. He's biting the net, you got him. Oh my goodness, you are too Until one of the rescuers figures out how to calm her down. A blanket! Yeah, perfection. It calmed her down so much. It looked really soft and comfy, so I'm sure it probably really made her relax. Step one, complete. But the rescue is not over quite yet. Now they need to get the baby over the rocks and into a rescue truck without waking her up. Got it? You good? It doesn't look easy. Daddy? Daddy? They make it! Phew! But there's another problem. The sea lion's cold. Colder than she should be. She's freezing. So they wrap her up and crank the heat for the ride back to the shelter. The sea lion needed a name. They decided to call her Wookie. Huh. I really like that name. She was small, only 23 pounds. It'd be a while at the shelter before she can go back to the wild. But in the meantime, Wookie started to have some fun. That's a big pile of sea lions. She met another sea lion named Rookie. Wookie and Rookie. Rookie became her best bud. For some reason, they only wanted to hang out with each other. No offense, other sea lions. Sometimes they let another sea lion snuggle, but usually it was just Wookie and Rookie having a blast. Before long, they grew up, and the rescuers set a date to release Wookie and Rookie back into the ocean. Together, obviously. When the day came, the rescuers brought them to the beach. They were wondering, would Rookie and Wookie want to go and leave their shelter life behind? They were probably thinking, man, we're going back to the ocean soon. I hope I know what to expect, even though I don't. All right, ready, set, go. There they go. They took off towards the water, and everything was perfect. But wait, that's not Rookie or Wookie. That's another sea lion named Siri. Wait, what? Hey, there's Rookie. Looks like he's checking things out. He's like, hmm, that big wet stuff looks familiar. Wait, is that home? I'm home! Wookie, on the other hand, she didn't want to leave her crate. But just when the rescuers thought they'd have to take Wookie back to the shelter, Rookie came over to remind her that they're in this together. Wookie and Rookie forever, man. And even though she's feeling scared, it's going to be OK. He's like, you got this, Wookie. We didn't do anything together. I'm kind of scared too, but... There goes Rookie. See you later. And then, it's Wookie's turn. Would she go or stay? There she goes. Bye, Wookie. She was like, Rookie, wait up. I can't run. I wasn't even built for running. All I was made for is swimming and waddling. See you later, sea lions. Don't forget to write. The rescuers are very happy. They've saved Rookie and Wookie. When the rescuers found Wookie, she was in serious trouble. A baby sea lion all alone. But now she's back in the ocean with the best friend, exactly where she was meant to be. We love you, Wookie. We love you, Rookie. Remember, 
If you see a sea lion in trouble or any other animal, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. When Chris found this baby squirrel lying on the ground, he couldn't believe what he was seeing. The squirrel was so young, he hadn't even opened his eyes yet. And I was just like, oh no, why is he laying on the ground? Where's his mother? Chris waited for his mama to show up, but when she didn't, he knew he had to help the little baby. I was like, I gotta do what I gotta do. We're all earthlings here. Chris needed the squirrel to trust him so he could get him big and strong and ready to go back to the wild. He made formula for the baby to eat. But the squirrel was stubborn and probably really scared. He didn't know Chris was trying to help him. Chris had to be patient until eventually the squirrel got a bit more hungry than scared. After those first few sips, he realized that maybe Chris wasn't so bad after all. And when he finally opened his eyes and saw Chris and his family for the first time, he never wanted to leave. Chris decided to give him a name, Acorn. Acorn ate and he ate and got bigger and stronger. Chris would hold Acorn tight, just like a mama squirrel would. It was almost like Acorn was a member of the family. He would sit in their arms and give them hugs, climb all over them, and complain when Chris went to work. Wanna come to work with me? Wanna come to work with me? Ah, he's under my shirt. <laughs> Acorn and his humans were inseparable which made Chris kind of worried. Acorn trusted them, which was what Chris had always hoped. But Acorn wasn't supposed to be a pet. He would need to go back to the wild someday. It was going to be tough, but Chris knew he had to get him ready to leave. The family started taking him outside because that's where squirrels are supposed to live. At first, Acorn was nervous. He still wanted to be close to Chris. Don't you jump on me, you're a wild guy now. Acorn had changed quite a bit since Chris first found him. But he trusted Chris enough to give this outdoor thing a try. Slowly, he started exploring, one tree branch at a time. Soon, he was spending all his time outside. You've been gone all day. And then one day, Chris didn't see Acorn in his yard anymore. He had gone off somewhere to be a wild squirrel. Chris was happy for Acorn, but he missed him too. He wondered where his little squirrel might be living now. But one day, Chris went out to his backyard and got a big surprise. Up in his tree, he spotted a squirrel nest, and inside was Acorn. Acorn had been building a nest this whole time, right next to Chris. He is still on the property, so I guess we're going to be neighbors. Like every baby, Acorn had to grow up. But even though he had to live on his own, he'll never be far from home. When an animal rescuer got a phone call about a pelican with a hurt wing wandering down the road, he knew he had to help her. Nadia's always saved animals. Sometimes he rescues them on the beach, like this seal tangled in a fishing line, or this baby shark who accidentally got washed ashore and needed Nadia to put him back in the ocean. Other times, his rescues take him way out on the water. Like when he freed this guy from a plastic bag or helped an injured sea turtle. 
The turtle's probably thinking, thank you, Nadia. But Nadia's biggest save of all time was this whale who was stranded on the shore. Nadia gathered friends who worked together and pushed the humongous animal into deeper water so she could swim safely away. So as soon as Nadia heard about a pelican who needed help, he searched all over. But he couldn't find her. Until the next morning, when he took his son's school class to the beach and spotted something. It was the hurt pelican. Since there was no animal hospital around, Medea decided to take the hurt bird home, where he would take care of her himself. Before long, Elsa was part of the family, and she was really happy in her new home. Nadia put medicine in her food and helped her practice moving to make her wings strong again. Elsa was basically the queen of the backyard. Elsa loved her rescuer. And best of all, she slowly started to get better. Then, something amazing happened. One day, Elsa began jumping and flapping her wings. It was her way of telling Nadia that she was ready to try to fly. So, he took her back to the beach where he'd found her. Though Elsa was a little wobbly at first, she started running and flapping her wings until... She did it! She was flying! It was the moment Nadia had been waiting for. It meant that Elsa could live on her own in the wild again, which is where she belongs. Nadia came back to the beach for the next few days to make sure she wasn't still there. And she wasn't. She had flown away. For Nadia, life is about rescuing animals in trouble. And seeing his new friend fly strong and free made him the happiest rescuer on the beach. When we found you, Jiminy, you were all alone with itchy fur and legs too tired to walk. Jimmy Cricket. There he is. But don't worry, little Jiminy. We're gonna help you. And your new foster mom will too. What do you think about that? <coughs> First, we need to clear up your itchy fur. But you seem too nervous. Your little tail is always tucked. Maybe this will help? Is it your favorite bed? I think so. Are you ready to get to work? It's time to help your skin heal. This soft shirt will stop you from scratching. Plus, you'll look great. Look at your eyes. Oh, yes. Hey, your shirts are helping your fur grow back. But you still aren't really walking. We can fix that too. Give it a try. Oh, yeah. You still just want to give us kisses, huh? Good boy. Come here. You're starting to act like a puppy. Not the scared dog you used to be. You're the boss of the backyard. That's right, Jimmy. You hold your own. <laughs> You're getting braver every day. 
And your fur is healed. It's been two whole months and you seem good. We think you're ready for a forever home. But you kind of love it here, don't you? Cute and Jiminy. And your foster mom loves taking care of you too. Well, we have some news for you. So, we have decided that Jiminy Cricket is staying with us. Did you hear that? We've helped you get your energy back, healed your itchy skin, found you your new best friends. Hey guys, we love each other. Gave you hugs, and now you're a happy dog. <laughs> Where'd you learn that? We love you, Jiminy. Glad you're finally all better. Dodo Kids! Help the kittens find the subscribe button.